And then we have uh, our next presentation is by Bao Tran, and Bao is not here either, and I think he will also give his presentation online. And Bao is working at University of Cologne in Germany, and he will tell about these cannabinoid uh, uh, compounds. So please, Bao. Hello, everyone. I am Bao Chen, a PhD student at the University of Hospital Cologne. Here is my presentation about dry eye therapy using cannabis ligands. An introduction to about dry eye disease and endocannabis systems. First of all, dry eye disease is a multifactorial disease with its vicious circle. Among them, we think about three core mechanisms, inflammation, epithelial damages, wound healing, and neurosensory abnormalities. Among several candidates, we think about endocannabis system. Activating the receptors or inhibiting the receptor can show the effect on all the three core mechanisms. So my research is to answer the questions if we can use the cannabinoids, especially CBR ligands as a multiple target therapy for dry eye disease. For the answer, my project has three parts. First is about desiccating stress models and in vivo models. Here we characterize CBR expressions during dry eye disease inductions. We found the effects of CBR ligands on dry eye disease phenotypes, especially relating to the neurosensory abnormalities and inflammations. The second part is an ex vivo wound healing models. We reported the effects on the wound healing process. In all the two parts, the first two parts is about the CBR involvement on dry eye disease battle mechanisms. The third part is about drug development study. In here, we have some experience about drug formulations and drug permeability study. So here is my first part, desiccating stress models and in vivo models. In here, dry eye disease phenotypes were reported. The tear production was low after three days, and it was maintained low for 10 days of the models. During that time, fluorescein score was increasing. That means more ethylene damage. On the right side, we see some fluorescein images. At day zero or baseline, the eye were at grade zero or one. After 10 days, the eye were at grade four or sometimes five. During dry eye disease inductions, interestingly, we found that CBR expression increased. We can see on the cornea of conjunctiva, CB1 or CB2 receptor expressions were increased during that time. As we found the cannabinoid receptor at the ocular surface, we tried some cannabinoid eye drops. Here is some results about TSCs and non-selective CBR agonists. After 10 days of treatment, together with the dry induction, TSC that reduced the CB1 expression compared to carrier and untreated group. Similarly, TSC also reduced expression compared to the untreated. The decrease in the CBR expression will come together with a good phenotype without. Here I chose the corneal epithelial damage. The fluorescein score in the TSC group was significantly lower than the carrier and lower than the untreated in dry eyes after five days and after 10 days of the treatment. Besides fluorescein score, we reported results about corneal nerve morphology and sensitivities. On the left side, there are some pictures about corneal nerve at the center of the cornea. The upper one is naive and the lower one is dry dizzy. They show that that it can stress reduce the corneal nerve morphologies in terms of density or in terms of corneal nerve length. Together with the nerve morphology, we did the corneal sensitivity test by von Freud filaments. The black column is untreated. The von Freud score after 10 days was higher than the baseline or than the naive. Interestingly, TSC did maintain the corneal sensitivity compared to the carrier or compared to the untreated mice. In the antagonist experiment, only CB1 antagonists did maintain the cornea sensitivity in here. After 10 days of the experiment, we collect the cornea, we did the staining again, and we found that TSC did maintain the cornea nerve morphologies. Here I showed the cornea nerve length result. We have a conclusion here. TSC did maintain the cornea nerve and it maintained the cornea sensitivity. On the other hand, CB1 or CB2 did not influence on the morphologies so we have a conclusion, CB1 antagonists that maintain the sensitivity without changing the corneal nerves. This slide is a summary for my first part about animal models. In dry eye disease mouse model, CB1 and CB2 receptors are present as ocular surface. 
Interestingly, they are especially increased during the rare disease induction. Applying CPR ligands and eye drops reduce the CPR expression in the corneas, which together show that the person score was lower. In terms of sensitivity and corneal nerve morphologies, TSC did maintain the corneal sensitivity. It may protect the corneal nerve morphology. However, CB1 receptor antagonists maintain the sensitivity without changing the corneal nerve morphology. We also have a reported about inflammation factors. Furthermore, we have a manuscript which was under the revision of the ocular surface. This is my second part in which we focus on the wound healing process. The cornea wound was generated by NLH in explanted mouth eyes. The eyes were fixed and intubated in the vitreous. Every six hours, we took the first image to observe the wound healing process. TSC or another substance can be prepared in a control media to compare with the untreated group. Here is our result. This is experiment with TSC, an agonist for CP1 and CP2. On the left side, there are some representative image. In the untreated group, after 24 hours, the wound is still there. After 36 hours, the wound was almost closed. The TSC at low concentration, I chose here 0.5 micromolar. At 24 hours, the wound was completely closed. On the other side, at high concentration, 10 micromolars. At 24 hours or 36 hours, the wound was still opened. We did the kaplan myers analysis. We confirmed that TSC at 0.5 micromolar significantly healed the wound completely faster than the untreated group. On the other side, TSC at higher concentration did delay the wound healing process compared to the untreated. We can say that activating CBR at low concentration improves the re Besides Beside reporting about TSC and agonists, we have an experiment about antagonist effect. As mentioned, TSC at low concentration healed the wound completely after 24 hours. In antagonist experiment, CB1 selective antagonist delays the wound healing process at 24 hours. Even at 36 hours, the wound was there. We did the data analysis and we confirmed that there is a statistic difference between CB1 antagonist and the untreated group. There was no difference between the CB2 antagonist and the untreated. We have a conclusion here why activating CBR by TSC improves the re -athlianization. Selectively inhibit CB1 delays the re process. That was our finding. As mentioned, the first two parts of my presentation focusing on RAI pathogenesis and endocannabis systems, in which we found a promising result for the TSC. This part focusing on drug formulation study for this substance. Previously, in an in vivo model, we prepared TSC in an aqueous formulation. TSC dissolved in the MSO, and then the stock solution will be diluted into a water phase to make a suitable concentration. With the aim for human use for a clinical trials, a formulation study was developed in which we made formulations with different excipients, and then the formulation will be evaluated with technical feasibility physical appearance, and short-term stability. This formulation study was conducted with an agreement with Roche pharmaceutical companies. And then there's some result. First, I would like to talk about TSC properties. TSC is a hydrophobic substance with high LFP values. That means it's very difficult to dissolve TSC in water. Secondly, the physical appearance of TSC is in form semi-solid or resin at room temperatures. As TSC was provided in a glass container, in order to take TSC out, it requires special technique with temperatures to prepare TSC. An important property, a steady degradation of TSC. As reported, TSC after 40 months or 50 months of storage, TSC content was significantly lower. The light condition also reduced the content of TSC after 12 days or 20 days. Plastic container also reduce the TSC contents after a few weeks of storage. These are important features for TSC formulation in futures. Based on TSC properties, 
is our experiment design for the drug formulation study. DSC is a hydrophobic substance. We select the solvent for the stop solution. These stop solutions are safe and commercially used in the market before. We have a water phase with different surfactants to maintain the stability of the eye drop. So we have five stop solutions. We have five water phase. Totally, we have 25 trial formulations. We make the formulations and based on the criteria, we select the optimal formulations. An example of physical appearance. Normally, the final formulation should have a homogeneous appearance. Under the microscope, there should be no particle size or particle detected. On the other hand, there are some formulations in which the phase separation appeared after 24 hours. Or under the microscope, we found some oily droplets particles in that. So the formulation were not selected for the next step. After formulation study, we select the four final formulations. Together with the DMSO formulation, we have five formulations will be used for the stability study. The stability study in which TSC contains was evaluated before and after sterilized filtration, before and after seven days of storage in room temperatures or four Celsius degrees. There are some formulations which we found the reduce in the TSC content. There are some formulations in which we found precipitates in the formulation after storage. This formulation will not be selected for the next step. At the end, we select the optimal formulation and to compare with the previous DMSO formulations. So I chose two formulations, DMSO formulation and transcutone formulations. This formulation will be used for further study in the University of Eastern Finland in the next part. Next step, we have a particle size measurement. This measurement was done without sterile filtration to prevent the effects of the 0.22 micrometer filtration on the particle size. We would like to see the DSC structures in the eye drops. The two formulations F00 and F24 showed that the size distribution is around 20 nanometers, which is complied with the previous publication about gramophore missile in water. Generally, TSC is in hydrophobic core of the missiles at the particle size at nanoscale, which is suitable for eye drop application. After seven days of storage at room temperatures or at 46 degrees, the particle size distribution was consistent at around 20 nanometers, which is very promising result for the further drug development study. In Finland, I also did the permeability study with radio label substance and TSC. For the radio label substance, we would like to compare the effects of non IT ingredients in two formulations. We have two formulations. We did the experiment with the hydrophobic substance and hydrophilic substance. Generally, two formulations show a similar pattern in the drug permeability study. We also did the experiment with TSC. We are waiting for the TSC quantifications, which will be done in Cologne. We will have in vivo and in silico predictions. In futures, we can have a discussion about the TSC distribution and the pharmacology activities in the ocular surface of the TSC. So at the end, this is my slide to summarize my project. My project is about three years. We have an experiment about the in vivo desiccating stress mouse models in which we found that CB1 and CB2 are involved in the dry eye pathogenesis. There are some cannabinoid ligands, TSC or selective agonists, which showed therapeutic effects on inflammation and neurosensory abnormalities. Their own have effects on the reethylization process. We have two formulations based on a screening experiment we proposed and prepared in the lab. In futures, from the drug formulation point of view, we can continue drug development based on two formulations. We can cooperate with the company for scaling up or for some legal perspectives. In near futures, we can think about a clinical trial. For the dry eye pathomechanisms, our dry eye disease and endocannabinoid system are really complicating. Deeper mechanisms, further pathway of the cannabinoid pharmacology should be studied in order to illustrate the effects of endocannabinoid system on dry eye disease.
Finally, is our group in University Hospital Cologne. I am a PhD student and early researcher here. My work is mainly in Germany. During this time, we have a valuable collaborations with Hoffman Laroche and University of Eastern Finland in the drug development studies. I would like to send my thanks to my supervisors in Cologne and in our collaborations. At the end, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, there is one question, please. Thank you for your talk. It's a very a huge quantity of works. I have some question about uh, the first part uh, in regards of cannab cannabinoid receptors. So I want to know uh, how do you explain the difference in false change between the cornea and the, and the conjunctiva after treatments? You have differences in false change in the two tissues in the first slides. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we yes. Basically, uh, basically, first of all, I have to talk that uh, the, the expression of the receptor are different at the beginning in the naive mice. So the foul chain might depending on, on the naive mice condition also. So I can say that expression in the conjunctiva are higher than in the cornea, if you understand my point. So it's my it might cause a difference here. So, so there are lots of things can be said. Uh, the next thing is about pharmacokinetics of the application or substance. So, so it's, it has to be explained further. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of problem. I, we didn't focus to answer that question. So, so I can tell you some, some important things in my head now. Okay, and did you check if, is it possible for you to check if this uh, receptor is expressed in human samples? Uh, or do we have some information about this? Uh, there are lots of um, review publications. Uh, they did it and they quantified on the human tissue or previously reported. So, so we can check it very easy on the PubMed or another system. Yeah, okay, thank they you. are in the human. Okay, I'm pretty sure they're in human. One more question here. Thank you. Hello, well. Hope yeah. you're Hello. there. I am Adrian. Uh, Adrian. <laughs> Hi. Uh, if I understand well at the beginning, when you were speaking about the effects of the antagonists and agonists of the receptor, uh, there was something f that uh, took my attention that both the agonists and antagonists uh, are doing the same, at least uh, speaking about tear production and ocular staining. So how you call, uh, understand, how, how you can explain that? <laughs> Do you have any explanation? Uh, for, the, for the tear production, it's also relating to the carrier here. We use the desiccating stress models. So it might cause some changing in the tear production if we put the, so we have to apply the eye drop every day. So it might change a little bit about the tear amount here. So, so it can be explained for the similar in tear production. Generally, there should be no effects of the drug on tear production or, or the effect is not significant to, to report. Okay, and I have another question. As you were speaking also about uh, sensitivity tests in your mice, you speak only about bone fray. But my question is, is you have tried other tests like the aperture ratio, the wiping test, or something just to understand uh, if something is changing in other kind of uh, receptors in the cornea or in the ocular surface? Uh, we only have, beside the sensitivity, we only have the cornea nerve morphology. So, so that's all two experiments we have at that time. So, so far, I haven't have a chance to do anything more. So, so that's all I can report at the moment for that moment. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any? Yeah, there's a question so, here. So, Bao, I, th I really enjoyed your talk. It's Virginia. Um, I just wondered whether you had tried any experiments where you add the um, the drug after you've induced your wound or your inflammatory stress to see whether you can downregulate an already 
initiated event? Uh, for own healing models, actually the own was before drug application. So I have to make an wound there and then I apply. How long did you wait after you applied the wound? Uh, it just five, ten. <laughs> I wait for the stabilize. So <laughs> I wait for the for the stabilize of the eye or something. It's not really waiting. It just wait for the short time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Bao. It's Annabelle from Paris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, I can hear yes. you. Yes. Uh, so you show that it's a very nice presentation, and you show that the CB1 and CB2 are expressed by the ocular surface, and that they are both increased uh, after the dry eye. And my question is, which cells express the CB1 and the CB2 in the ocular surface? The epithelial cells, the nerve cells, inflammatory cells? Uh, it's very clear that, um, uh, not, not, not very clear, but I can predict uh, high chances. The, so we know that cornea nerves are there at the corneas and even at the upper layers of the cornea. So I believe that there are some CB1 receptor at the cornea nerve at the ending of the nerve or even uh, even uh, closer to the, to the cornea layer, to the upper layers. And CB2 are in the immune cells. Many people say that and confirm that in their experiments. So they are there in the inflammation cells. They are reported in every cell at the ocular surface and every cell relating to the dry eye disease. So far now, I yeah. So far now, that's what I read and what I what I believe is true, like like that. Okay. And did you have the chance to get some knockout mice like CB1 or CB2 or both? Um, just, just to, uh, just to develop the dry eye model in that uh, knockout mice. <laughs> uh, not in my time in in in, in my PhD because uh, we haven't have an official experiment with uh, with knockout mice. We did some trial experiment. It showed good result, but uh, we couldn't go that far to confirm the result or, or somehow. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have one question about the because <clears throat> there there is endogenous. CB1 ligand anandamide, and then there are various derivatives that are not narcotic. Have you considered to use such derivatives instead of THC, for example? Um, uh, there, there, is, uh, for the, uh, there are some candidates in the endocannabis system and cannabinoids, but uh, uh, THC was reported to have, um, how to say, the high efficiency and, and high uh high affinity to the receptor so we chose it in order to make it uh, clearer or make it easier to to predict the mechanisms uh another bit uh, was reported with a low efficiency as i as i read before so we didn't go with that thing uh we also have uh, many more famous things like cbd or some other derivatives but uh so far now the mechanism is really complicating so we chose the SCN and some selective antagonists for, for my research. Okay, yeah. I bow. Very nice talk and congratulations. This is Kuhn. Um, yeah. So THC, of course, is a compound which also has systemic effects. Did you measure or do you expect to have systemic side effects of a topical application? Uh, it's also relating to uh, our permeability study. So I expect that um, it's only under 5% or very low concentrations uh, can be absorbed into the circulations in here. But we have to test it and I'm waiting for the result. To be honest, I'm waiting for the result, looking forward to the quantification result. Uh, I believe that the, the, the system absorption should be low and it's not, uh, I didn't observe any side effect on the mouse model in the in vivo models up to now, so. Well, maybe I can comment about this, that the, actually the systemic absorption from eye drops is uh, very big. Usually it's m something like 70, 80%, and that happens very quickly. It, to some extent, it depends on the compound. So, but I would expect that it would be quite a lot to 
the systemic circulation. Only a few percent goes into the eye. Uh, but then it's a question of the dose, that if you are fine with a very small dose applied topically, then the dose that goes to the systemic circulation may be still very small, even though the percentage would be high. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then I think we are fine. So thank you, Bao, once again. Yeah. Very thank nice. You. And uh, I, would like to <coughs> I would like to thank all the speakers in this session. I think they have done a superb job and uh, performed, made very clear and nice presentations. And I think now we have a coffee break and we are just in time for the coffee. So thank you. <laughs>